So hello everyone, welcome to our open day instructions and uh, it's from uh, schools of arts, design and architecture. And uh, we are here to uh, elaborate what is it like to study a bachelor's degree in the school of arts, design and architecture. If you have any questions, you are very welcome to send in the chat and uh, the questions about applying will be answered in the webinars hosted by admission services on Friday. And you can also directly contact them at admissions at auto.fi. And a little bit words about who we are. So, um, I'm today's interviewer. My name is Hui Jia. Uh, I'm a master student of urban studies and planning in landscape architecture. And we have two um, panelists and also our interviewee today, uh, Ilona and Zina. Hi. Do you want to introduce yourself, Ilona? Yeah. Uh, so, hi, everybody. My name is Ilona. I'm a third year student in the English language version of the design bachelor's degree. And um, yeah, I don't really know much what much else to say about myself, but oh, well, I guess I could say I'm Finnish, but I have an international background and I've come back to Finland to study again. So yeah, that's about a brief summary of me. Okay, thank you, Ilona. And uh, Zina, do you want to say a few words? Yeah. So I'm also from the same program as Lona uh, in the third year also. Uh, and yeah, I'm from Argentina, uh, also from France. And yeah, it's, I'm excited to talk more. Okay, okay, we can move next. So uh, later we will talk about the studies uh, in Auto University. Okay, so the first question, uh, why did you choose Auto University? Mm, well, from my perspective, I chose Auto because it's very known in Finland. Like I mentioned that like I didn't grow up here, so I didn't really have too much of an understanding of like what university or college would be like if I came to Finland. I knew that that was like a very strong option for me to take because obviously my family's from here and so it's like a a privilege that I have that I can come back to this country to study. So then when I was thinking of like what universities I could attend, Aldo was like one of the only ones that I even knew about. And then when I looked it up, I found out that they had an English language track of design and I thought that I would apply because Aldo has a good reputation and it seemed like a university that could fulfill my wants and needs. How about you, Zina? Um, yeah, uh, I guess that's a bit of contrast with um, my situation because I only applied to Alto University and I came almost straight after high school. I took a gap year. Um, so I was finishing uh, my gap year in Argentina and I was looking for where to go next. And I stumbled across uh, the Alto University website and I had never even thought of coming to Finland. Um, but there was something about the way that Alto was presented. It was very humble and welcoming. And I was just like, oh, wow, this seems really cool and interesting. And um, so I, I searched uh, what programs were there and I found this program and it just seemed to line up perfectly with my wants and interests. Um, and then during the application process, the preliminary assignments and all these assignments matched up with my personal views um, and just what I wanted to get out of design and studying design in a university so well that it was, it was just, I had to come. Yeah, yeah I have the same feeling. And it's mm -hmm. nice that we finally meet here and so what is the best part about studying at Aalto? There's a, there's a lot of good parts. Um, this picture actually is kind of one of the parts that um, stands out to me. Uh, the person wearing a pink jacket here is part of the Design Student Association. And so for me, student associations are like a big part of why it's so great to study here because it um, creates such a great sense of community. And 
you really get this kind of sense that you can find people who like have the same interests as you and people who have also differing interests as you. And so one of the things that I was first worried about when I came here is that I would meet all these people who have the same interest as me and I wouldn't be getting different perspectives and I wouldn't be challenged in any way. But I was surprised to find with just how many people have such niche interests and such differing interests that you can almost always, no matter what project you're working on, you can find someone else who can give you a different perspective than what you were expecting. And it can make you think about um, whatever project you're working on or what you're dealing with in a completely different way than like what you normally would think about it as. I, I completely agree with what you just said. I think the people are just amazing and the student life is also great. We'll talk more about that later, I think. Um, but I, I could add also about the people and the studies that um, it's there's such different people, not only within your studies, but in also university itself. And since we're all here sort of on the same campus and interacting with each other, it's really nice to be able to just also talk to people who are in different studies and really expand your expectations or stereotypes of what that study is. Um, because everyone has such different like interests and viewpoints. And I feel like I'm constantly challenging my own stereotypes and uh, what, how I see the world. So that's, that's a really nice part of it. Okay. So what made you want to study the, your field? This is a really good question because I don't even know if I still have an answer for it. Um, I think the main thing is that I've always been like a really visual person and I've always really enjoyed art and things like this. And so when I was looking for a university to go into out of high school, I just kind of went down that path anyway. I was actually originally going to do theater, but then very last minute, I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to pursue my life's passion. And then when I came to Finland, I was like, okay, anything visual, anything in English and design happened to be one of these options. And I always kind of heard of this concept of design, but obviously design in and of itself is quite broad. Like there's so many things that fall into that category. And so that's also kind of what attracted me to it is I knew that because at that point when I was applying, I didn't really have an idea of like, one specific like career that I wanted to pursue. And so the broadness of design also kind of attracted me because I knew that I could study a degree in this, but I didn't necessarily have to commit to one specific area of interest and I could potentially try out different things and then figure out what I was more interested in and then I could specify a little bit more into those interests. Well said. Um, for, for me, it was um, also about the broadness of design and how it's very versatile. And the I think also my reasons for studying design have sort of evolved a lot. Uh, but when I first applied to design and also still now, um, I I was very creative. I, I I am very creative. I do um, art and a lot of other stuff, but I'm also really interested in problem solving um, and also in societal impact. So like this photo is uh, from some uh, protests that we had back home uh, related to women's rights. Um, and I was also very active there and I wanted to from my own profession and my own career also be able to have some sort of positive impact somewhere. Um, and yeah, so design was, was the way to go for me. Matching all those things up just uh, concluded in design. Okay, so what are your studies like? Hmm, broad question. Um, it kind of depends a lot on the year and it depends on what we're focusing on. At least with our program, we, like I mentioned a little bit before, we have a lot of different topics that we focus on. So like one day we might be focusing or one course we might be focusing on programming and then a different course we might be focusing a little bit more on graphic design. 
And so I think it's one of these programs that lets you explore a lot of different things um, and lets you figure out kind of what you want to be interested in without necessarily pushing you too much in one specific direction. So that's why I kind of struggle answering this kind of question because it's depending on what time of the year that you ask me this, it, the answer can be very different. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I mean, like also design is like um, a field that we have quite different um, course types if you compare to other programs. So do you mostly have this individual like working or like group work or seminars? What do you really have? So yeah, I could I could answer this question. Uh, so most of our courses are project based, which means that we have some theoretical material, uh, but at the same time we're developing our own project based on sometimes most times a real problem, um, and that means that we work in group a lot. But there's also some uh, individual projects that we do. Um, as you move along your studies, it's expected that you'll do more group work. And also, I think an important thing is that we are not expected to, uh, what do you call this, uh, specialize. So we don't have to choose in the last part of our first year between graphic design, industrial design, or anything of the sort. Um, we are expected to dabble in everything and uh, experience what all of these different types of designs are like, uh, but we are not uh, expected to focus solely on one thing. So it's really, they really want us to become these interdisciplinary uh, designers and follow more our interests and our themes. Uh, and be able to explore a lot. So I, I personally really like that. Um, and I can add that uh, we have thematic studio, which is uh, during the first two years, a really important course uh, where the students themselves choose the theme, the topic. So for example, uh, Alona and I, our course, we chose uh, what was it? Uh, designing um, against overconsumption. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was for Thematic Studio One. So everyone can freely develop their own project uh, and inside that theme. And you get support from teachers and tutors, you get access to the workshops, etc. cetera. Um, and then we have other important courses where we bring in um, third parties. Uh, for example, we worked with the NGO Nystan Linia um, and in groups developed a problem, a solution for one of their current problems. Um, so yeah, fun stuff. Yeah, I think it's very interesting and also it's quite beneficial, I guess, to just work on different topics and yeah. So are there, uh, yeah, it's already kind of on answer the questions, but do you have some other words about it? I mean, we can also answer that like, in terms of being able to choose courses from different departments, that is also possible. You have a room for electives. And so you can choose not just stuff that is in the design department, you can also study in, you know, computer science and things like this with their elective courses. So in that sense, you do definitely have room like outside of just your required courses for more multidisciplinary opportunities. Yeah, okay, so what is your course load like? Um, I guess currently maybe not that much, but what about first year, for example? First year was, um, first year was pretty heavy, at least for the first period. Uh, we had, I don't know if this is the way the program runs anymore, but at least for our experience, it was that we were pretty much in school every day from nine to five. And that was for the first couple of months. And it did obviously, you know, ease up the further the year went along, but the first little bit is pretty intensive and they really try and get you, you know, focused and working. And it's 
it is definitely like really rewarding at the end when you get this like big course load done, but it can be a little bit stressful in the beginning if you're jumping into it um, with like zero expectations like I did. But um, for me, like the course load really depends on uh, obviously what my like um, required courses are versus also what electives I want to take. Um, so like if we talk about right now, I'm currently taking four different courses and those are like um, one of them is a required course. Some of them are for required courses for my minor. And then one of them is like an elective course that I'm taking. And so that just depends entirely on like what I choose to study. And so there are times when you're only required to take like one mandatory course. And at that point, you could choose to just take that one course for that whatever period that happens to be in. And then if you have that one course like once a week, then, you know, your studies are going to be lighter for that time. Uh, but then if you really, really want to make sure that you're constantly studying, then you can push on electives and make sure that you're constantly at school. But I think it depends on how you plan out your studies and how you want to, um, yeah, make sure that your time is split evenly. Yeah. Uh, what is the average um, credits, for example, your courses are you really like? I think maybe if we're talking about average credits, maybe like Zena might be able to correct me on this, but maybe like four to six or something like that. Okay, but I mean, like, for example, per course, like. Maybe I'm thinking three. I was originally going to say three, but now I'm thinking four to six because the courses that stick out are like the thematic studio and the bigger courses. But I guess on average with everything else on the side, I think maybe like three. Okay, so now it's the Zina's schedule about her everyday like. Yeah. So this is very, it's, it's very weird to explain your schedule um, because in arts we just, we have very different days and it depends on the semester. It depends really, really like on the day. Um, and especially if uh, you participate in other stuff like in uh, student uh, guilds or anything else or a holoped, uh, you might also have meetings and, and stuff but uh, usually during the day I have um, one meeting one class uh, and then time for hobbies and lunch and everything uh, but usually um, yeah I would say that it's really important to note that you do have a lot of time for free time and for hobbies uh, but you also have to dedicate quite a lot of your time to studies, uh, but being doing group projects or reading or writing or anything, really. Um, but that's why it's so important that you know how to manage your own time. <laughs> but there's also courses from Alto that uh, help you with that. Following is the Leonas schedule. Yeah, um, I was going to kind of piggyback of what Zina said is that like, when I first started my studies, I would not have been able to organize my time like this, but it is like kind of essential, I find now with my studies. Um, this is also kind of like a, I guess, like a Monday. This is pretty typical for like what I would do today. Um, I would only have really a lecture in the morning and then for most of my afternoon, I would do homework. Um, I think the one different thing that I have apart from Xena is from three to five, I might have board meeting or work because I'm part of our design student associations board. And so sometimes I also have to make time separately for that. But I would say that like, if you take anything out of this whole, what does your day look like? It can look like a lot of different things, but a lot of it can also be up to how you organize your time. And it's not necessarily that you have, you know, course one, lunch, course two, course three, da, 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 da. So it can be completely up to you. Okay, so now we can um, try to introduce more about our campus. So it's located in autonomy. Uh, it's only like 10 minutes or like around 10 minutes metro right away from Helsinki Center. And in your eyes, what is the campus like? It's pretty big. <laughs> I get like in the beginning when I first came there, I was like, oh, there's people who live in 
Tecarecula, which is like, in, in the beginning, I thought it was like, oh, it's like a five minute walk away. But like, if you want to go from Tecarecula to campus and have lunch, it can take quite a while. So the campus is like pretty big, but I think it's also good because you don't end up being in just like one building every time you go to school. There's like a whole bunch of different places you can go. There's a bunch of different student restaurants that you can eat at. So you don't always have to eat in the same place, which can be kind of annoying if there's like a rush hour during lunchtime and you have to wait in line forever. Um, but there's a bunch of different workshops and there's a lot of nature and forest, which is great. And that's one of the parts that I really like about it, that it's not just this like barren city type campus, but there's also some nature in there. And so that's really nice. Yeah, I, I completely agree with everything you just said. Um, I, I live on campus, so I, I have quite a bit of on campus experience. Um, and for me, especially some things I can add is just the energy uh, when you come to the campus, there's always people running around in their student overalls or there's uh, maybe that's closer to the student village, but there's people playing music or playing games outside. Uh, you can always see something going on. Um, and then for me, it's, it's I'm just going to build up this point that nature there's there's just a lot of nature around and uh, we have our uh, otaketu which is the um, otaniemi fox there's many foxes and you can see bunnies um, and it's very refreshing to be around here um, just because of this it's it's very vibrant so that's to me what's important <laughs> So, what is your favorite thing about the campus? This is kind of a hard question. Um, I think one of my favorite spots that comes to mind is um, this thing called Bipu. It's like a big tree in front of uh, Vare, which is the main, I guess, it's not really the main building of Alto, but that's where the metro goes. And it's this big tree that's right in front of there. And um, it's really fun to, if you have class on in Vare, it's fun to like sit by the tree. And especially now when it's fall, the leaves are changing color and it, they, it looks really pretty. And I really like sitting by that tree. Yeah, I also saw people just take away their lunch and then just sit there and chat with friends. Yeah. That, that's what I did today. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I think, always asking about a favorite thing is hard because there's just so much um but yeah maybe i can add that um from the art side uh there's even though otayumi is, is an espo and you might think that it's like all far away um it is really connected and um it's this little international space also where you just hear so many different languages on the streets um and i think that's that's very fun and there's also in the alto buildings and surrounding buildings there's a lot of art exhibitions going on especially from the students um we just had the design week exhibitions some of them here um and those are always very eye-opening so yeah yeah, it's very cool that now I think in Valle they have some exhibitions on the clothes and very beautiful. Yeah. Okay, uh, now it's about the housing and student benefits. So what kind of housing options are there for students? Well, you have the ones that are listed here, which is HOAS and AYY. So HOAS is... Um, uh, I don't know how to translate it to English because this acronym is in Finnish, but it's like the Helsinki uh, Student Housing Association or something like this. And then AYY is um, also an acronym in Finnish, but it's the it's all just like big student association. And so they both have housing um, options available. AYY obviously has uh, housing in like on campus. And I think Zina can talk about that a bit more because she lives there. But I personally live in Hoas housing, so I can probably talk about that more. This apartment that I'm in now is a Hoas place. Um, I live in Matinkula, which is also in the Espo area. 
I live right next to the metro, so it's like very close on campus. I think it takes me like 15 minutes to get to campus, which is very convenient. Um, there's like stores nearby. My rent is like really reasonable for the apartment that I have and in the location that I have. And I have two roommates who I share this with. And so I'm also not living alone, which is really helpful or has been really helpful during quarantine. But at least um, with the HOAS options that I have, I've been really happy here. Some people bounce around from different HOAS uh, apartments, but I've lived here since uh, I moved to Finland in 2019. So I've been like really satisfied with my options from HOAS. Yeah, I'm currently also live in HOAS and uh, I think they, they also have other types of rooms because I'm also living in a shared apartment, but they also have the studio, for example, or family apartment that you can choose when you apply for it. Yeah. Uh, Zina, do you have some tips about the AYY apartments? Um, yeah, uh, well, I, I actually, when I came here, I first moved into uh, Hoas apartment and uh, it was here on campus and I shared it with this one Finnish girl um, who was very nice and um, we actually applied for housing together even when I was in Argentina uh, so we found each other online through this uh, Hoas uh, website um, which if you're searching for going into a shared apartment you should probably use it because it's very nice to know who you're going to move in with um, and at least that made my experience much better uh, but then after a year I moved in to AYY um, I now live with my partner and we have this very nice uh, uh, very pretty apartment from AYY and it's uh, nice it's got a balcony the rent is super good it's uh, very quiet people sometimes worry about the noise here but honestly everyone's just so respectful with the times if there's any noise it's going to stop at 10 p.m um, and I've never had any issues with it and also in Finland the walls are incredibly thick like <laughs> the walls are prepared for winter you will not hear anything inside the apartment <laughs> um, so so yeah yeah i think the good side is also like both of them like they include the facilities for example like sauna and the laundry room and i mean like sauna is quite important <laughs> especially in finland <laughs> yeah it is it is yeah and i think you already uh, talk about where you are living and is it easy to get to the campus yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the easiest that it possibly could be. There's uh, lots of bus connections, but there's also a metro that takes you directly to campus. The metro stop is labeled Alta University. So even if you take the metro, you, you can't really miss it because it's right there. And so it's really convenient. It takes you right to A Block or Avada, which is kind of the central part of campus. And so that's, uh, that's how I get there. But it's also very easy to, even when the metro doesn't run in the evenings, it's also really easy to get off campus with bus uh, or to get to on campus with the bus. So there's different ways that you can get there at like different times of the day. Yeah, I agree with that. So uh, what kind of student benefits are there? Um, I think HSL is quite like we often use that because when traveling to some place, then we just use it. And also Frank, it's like a app that you can just use for the as a student digital student card. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the HSL student benefit is really good. I, I think normally 30 day season ticket for students for like two zones costs or for normally without the student discount, I think costs something like 50 euros. And then for students, it costs like 30. And so it's it's way more affordable to get it through HSL. And it's definitely one that you need if you use the public transport, which as a student, you probably will. So the, the student benefits with HSL are really good. And then, yeah, with Frank, you get discounted meals from uh, the student places. I think a full meal is 270. So that's like pretty good value for a full meal where you get like a drink and a full thing with salad and a bread and it's, it's very convenient. Yeah, I can add that also from 
uh, Frank, you get discounts for many other stuff like stores and uh, grocery shopping um, and also from the guilds. You also, depending on, for example, I'm in Tokyo, which is the arts um, association and in Nude, which is the design association. Um, and from them, you might also get quite a lot of benefits uh, from arts you get for going to museums, for example, uh, sometimes, or buying certain art supplies. Uh, so there's also that. Yeah, I remember there's also this YTHS, which is like the healthcare services. Yeah, that's really important. Um, now you have to pay it separately before it was included in your uh, sort of, uh, what do you call it, like subscription to AYY. Mm -hmm. um, but now you have to pay it separately. Uh, I think it's just 30 euros per semester. Um, but you get quite good healthcare, and I know that I've used it um, a lot. They've got one of their centers here on uh, campus. Uh, it's not it's not for emergencies though, but anything that uh, you might need from doctors otherwise is is there. Yeah, and most of the services are free and yeah, they answer. I think the the callback system is also quite fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's move to the career opportunities, um, which is quite important. So is it possible to combine studies with work? I think it's definitely possible. I personally don't work while I study, but I know plenty of people who do. Um, I think with my current schedule, it would be pretty difficult for me to work. But this is also one of those things that goes back to like planning out your studies. If you know that you're going to work, then I think it's something that you can work with your study coordinators and with the people in your the people who run your program and you can tell them that, hey, I need to also work in order for me to study. And then they can hopefully help you plan out your studies so that you make time to work. So it definitely depends on how you sort of customize your options. Yeah, I can say that I've been working uh, alongside my studies for most of the time. Um, and even at the beginning, uh, I was struggling to find a job and I needed to. And I went to um, our uh, program director and I, I told him, hey, like, do you have any way that you can help me with this? And him and the study coordinator also really helped me out to get settled and find a job um, and also organize my studies so that I'm able to do all this without stressing myself out too much. Um, I can say, though, that I am taking a bit longer to complete my studies. Um, but uh, I think it is possible if you want to start working after the first half of the first year. Uh, I think it's manageable, um, but probably not at the beginning. It might be a bit difficult. Yeah. Okay, um, so what kind of career opportunities are there? Mm, so far, there's been quite a few in terms of design opportunities. There's so many different career paths that you can take. It's really hard to just say one specific thing, but um, there's a lot of options in terms of like going into more service design oriented places. I think in Finland, service design right now is something that is um, pretty popular, I guess, or it's very talked about. And so there's a lot of um, opportunities in that, but there are also a lot of opportunities for something that's a little bit more um, visual or something that's a little bit more, I don't wanna say creative, I don't wanna bash on service designers or anything, but something that's a little less um, of that orientation. So at least in terms of design, there are definitely different ways that you can um, choose to go for your career. There's a lot of different options. And I think in Finland, there's always startups and other opportunities like that that you can work with to get some kind of handle on your specific desired industry. Yeah, for sure. And also from all to itself, we get quite a lot of contact with other uh, design companies. So from Nordet Design Edit, which is Nude, the design organization, 
uh, we also get quite a lot of contact. Uh, we have some meetings where we go to different companies or just see what's going on in the industry. We have career night uh, where professionals come and talk to us. Um, but there's also the startup center, a grid on campus uh, where there's a lot of innovative people uh, and their startups uh, who are also connecting with uh, Alto and the students in design and other creative fields. Um, and there's quite a lot of initiative now to get that uh, community of startups more connected with students of creative fields. Um, and also, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's about all I could say about that. We also get um, mails, for example, from our coordinator when there is uh, job opportunities or, or stuff of the sort, um, which is, is very interesting. Yeah, I think for like direct sort of career opportunities, I would also say that NUDE or the Design Association, I think has been my like most direct way because a lot of these design companies like to collaborate with student associations and things like that so like Zena said we get excursions over there and they've helped sponsor some stuff and so like um you know you hear about a lot of these companies that you could potentially work for like as you're doing your studies and so you kind of get familiar with at least what the design landscape looks like in Finland already like during your studies from like how much they interact with student associations yeah, and I think in addition that uh, at Auto, like you also can with your student account, you can get in this job teaser website, and then you can also just make an alert about what you are focused on, and then they will send you email about it. Okay, and about the student life, what is the student life like? It is very colorful. <laughs> student life um, is one of the best parts of living here and of studying at Aalto. I think it's, student life in Finland is really unique. I had no idea how like we have our, these own traditions and things that are specific to Finland. Uh, for example, these like student overalls or student jackets, which you get as a university student and they're different colors, depending on what you study. For designers, we get jackets that are different patterns every year. And so that was something that I never even heard about when I first came to Finland. One of my friends who lives here was like, oh, you're, you're going to get student overalls. And I was like, student overalls, what is that? And then when I heard about it, I, it's, it's such a fun tradition because every time there's something going on on campus, and honestly, even when there doesn't seem to be anything going on campus, you always see at least somebody with their overalls and they all look so different and they, they're really cool. But I think that's the main thing that like has surprised me about student life is that in Finland, it really is like, very unique and we have our own traditions and it's really fun to get to know all of the different things that has that is specific to like Finnish student life. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. The when I came here during the first week I was in Finland, I wasn't uh, studying yet. Um, classes hadn't started and I was seeing all these people with these overalls around the city and I was like, what is this? Why? What is this Finnish fashion? And then on the first day of classes, I asked my tutor, like, why is everyone wearing this? Um, and I was just so happy to find out about it because the idea is that you also put patches on them and you get to modify them and just make them your own. Uh, so it's also about, you know, your personal expression and uh, whatever you do, all the patches you accumulate. Um, so it's a very nice um, way to sort of track your experience through university. Um, and and yeah, uh, I think I can add like, yeah, there's parties, there's a lot of parties, but there's also um, stuff like we mentioned before, career night or participating in associations, uh, like Alone is on, on the board of you know, Design Edit, um, and she's done a really good job. Um, but I, since I work, I, I haven't been able to really participate that much. Um, but uh, I try to be as active as I can 
Uh, so I'm part of a committee in the association and I just try to volunteer as much as possible and help out with events and, and different sort of things. Um, and that's really rewarding. So what do you do on your free time? Uh, well, normally I tend to work on student association stuff actually, because it's like volunteer work. Um, during that time, I like to think about like how we can improve stuff and how um, I'm like, I have a few different roles on the board. And so like, I try and think about how I can improve my position for people who will come after me and things like that. But I do also, um, you know, like to see Helsinki every once in a while and like to explore Finland because, well, before, I went, before quarantine, I was really busy. So I didn't really get the chance to do that. And then quarantine started and then I couldn't leave my apartment. And so I didn't really get the chance to see Helsinki all that much. And so I try and do that like every once in a while when I have free time that I can go and explore the town a little bit more and like see what different opportunities there are. But also, I also just like to spend time with my friends and have lunch with them on campus and see how they're doing. What about you, Zima? Yeah, um, so free time. Um, I, I think I also try to explore Helsinki as much as possible. And like this photo is also from um, a protest that there was last year um in the in the senate square so i also try to be active in some uh things or as much as possible because well you know covid happened so there's only so much we can do physically um but yeah i try to explore get as much of the finnish culture um around me and also try to explore the surroundings of, of helsinki so other cities um, also have their very own particular sceneries and, and culture. Um, and that's, that's, that's really nice. Um, but yeah, I also have a few hobbies, um, which I try to dedicate as much time as possible to, like rollerblading, um, my own personal art, uh, reading, writing, etc anything that i might be into at the time um and and yeah when you uh, mentioned this trolling it reminded me of the uh this vr company that's when as a student if you go traveling somewhere then you can also get the student discounts which is quite convenient and cheaper yeah yeah you get quite a lot of discounts i went like on the train to dampere a few weeks ago, and um, it was quite cheap. Yeah, very convenient thing. So about this auto community, how were you welcome to the community? For example, when you first arrived here, Finland or in auto university? It was really welcoming. I was <clears throat> surprised with how much they were kind of anticipating like how little I knew. I thought that I was like unprepared, but they really were very open and answered whatever questions that I had, even questions that I felt like were really stupid. The community is so like diverse and open that I feel that it's not just like full of people who come from the same background, which for me, like, because I've grown up in an international background is really important to me that I continue that. And so I was really uh, pleasantly surprised with just how many people from different backgrounds there are here and how many like different people you get to talk to who have different opinions from you. And I think it's regardless of how many different people there are, the, the community is still like really welcoming and really open and people really want to talk to you and get to know you. And so that's something that um, was there when I first came here and it's still here and it's it's a part of the community that I I really enjoy. Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> Um, I was I was a bit scared when I was coming here because I didn't know that much about Finland and I had only heard these like stereotypes that Finnish people are cold and unfriendly and I think the first Finnish person I met here came and just like yelled like ah come give me a hug um so 
I think the rest of the experience just continued that way. Everyone is so friendly and uh, really tried to help us out um, and not bombard us with too much information. Um, even though with the excitement of, of the first weeks, all this information kind of like goes past you. Um, but you learn, you learn to adapt. And, and yeah, there was just so much to get used to and so many new things. And I just felt like, especially the, the tutors during the first, we had this first orientation week uh, where there's tutors from the associations that guide you around and uh, help you out. Um, it was really nice to be able to have another student there guiding you through everything and, and helping me out. Um, and then the year after that, I was also, I signed up to be a tutor and, and continue that, that tradition. Um, and yeah. Yeah, it's like when you get help, then the next year we want to help other people and to get quickly through into the community. So what is it like to be an international student at Auto? I think Zina can probably answer this question more than I can. Yeah, you're, you're in a weird middle. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, from, from my experience, I, I can say that there's a lot of, well, I've mentioned this before, there's just people from so many different places and there's a lot of uh, different cultures like merging in in Otanyemi, uh, just because everyone uh, just brings their own things. Um, so it's really nice, for example, to have uh, an Italian food night uh, or, or anything of the sort. Um, and then it's, it's, I've met people from countries that I never thought I would meet someone from. And, you know, you, like I said before, your stereotypes just keep on breaking. And I think that's a really part of, really big part, like of this whole experience. Um, but then also there might be some bad parts, like, okay, you don't know Finnish, uh, so you can't go to this specific course that you really want to. You might be able to insist and say, hey, I don't know Finnish, but I can understand something um, and try to do something, but uh, it's, yeah. Um, then people here are also usually really welcoming to us international students. Um, I've, at least my experience has been, everyone just wants to show me around Finland and, and really try to get me involved, which is really nice. And I haven't had many negative experiences in that aspect. Yeah, as an uh, international student myself, I also feel like most of the things that they speak very good English. So even if you are somewhere and you are lost, you can just ask somebody who are passing by and they are willing to help you. And even though you don't know any Finnish, you can still survive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now it's about the surviving questions. So is it possible to survive without knowing Finnish? I think it is, at least like for, for myself, I really want to learn Finnish and I'm trying to get to the point where I can have an actual conversation and sort of actually get involved in Finnish conversations. Um, but you can, you can definitely survive and more uh, without knowing Finnish. And I think around uh, Alto, it's it's super easy to just go around with English. I've, I've also, like English, Spanish is my first language. So I've had moments where I'm just at a random party and five Finnish people come and all of them know Spanish. And we just end up speaking Spanish. Um, <laughs> And that's that's happened uh, surprisingly like a lot of times, um, but of course with other languages it might be a bit different. <laughs> but at least my advice would be to try to get to learn the basics just so you, you can handle yourself at the shopping 
center, or, you know, doing your groceries um, and try to learn as much as you can. So you can also understand what's going on around you. Um, but people here usually, as I said before, know English and they're happy to talk to you <laughs> in English. And yeah. Yeah, I would definitely agree with what you said. It's quite easy to like leave here without knowing Finnish because in out of, for example, campus that you are surrounded by the fellow students who are also international students and on the street. I mean, like Helsinki, for example, I feel like people at least know good English. And also I was in UNSU myself and also like most of, of the people I met, they speak perfect English. Yeah. And also, like, if you want to learn some basic Finnish, there are also some course in auto university just you can take. Oh, I could add that for for us, <laughs> our, our program, uh, if you have not been educated in Finnish or Swedish, because Swedish is also the other uh, official language of Finland, um, then you have to take a course in basic like first level Finnish or Swedish. Um, so, so yeah, uh, in order to pass, you need to take that course, but it's very basic um, and you get a lot of support. And there's a lot of other courses after that that you can take if you want to, to get your Finnish better. Yeah, I think it's quite useful tips for the students. Okay, now it's our Q&A section. So we will go through all the questions that you've sent. Um, and also regarding those questions about applying, that there will be a separate webinar that they will got answered there. So let's see about the questions. Uh, first, do you choose electives each semester or you choose them the first year and stick with them? No, um, you can choose your electives at least, you know, whenever you want. If you find a course that you really like and it hasn't already passed and it's still, you know, coming up, then you can choose to take that elective. And so there's no like you don't ever really like lock in your design or sorry, your study options. So there's none of that. You can choose to do whatever you want and your studies can like fluctuate with how you grow as a person when you study here. So there's no locking in any electives in the first year. I can say that if you have to take from eight to 15, I think, um, credits of electives and plus one uh, cross school course. Uh, so one course from any other school of Alto. And yeah, that's, that's what you have to do but at least I have done more courses, more electives than that already in my studies, just because I found the time and I found interesting courses. Yeah, I think there's there's so many interesting electives that if we had to lock them in during the first year, I think that would be pretty difficult because I every time I look through the courses, I'm always like, oh, there's so many that I wanna take that I always keep a list of courses that I wanna take throughout my studies. And Another question. Uh, I'm very interested in studying at Aalto University in the future. What can I do to prepare? I think, um, well, I'll be honest from my perspective, I don't think I really did any conscious preparation, if that makes sense. Like, I don't think I did any projects or anything like that, that I thought would specifically helped me to get into Aldo. And so from my perspective, all I really did was sort of pursue what I wanted to do and figure out kind of what I enjoyed doing and then built like a semi portfolio based off of that or like tried to sort of focus on that in high school. Um, and, you know, that's what eventually got me here. So I guess the main thing is like focusing on what you're interested in will eventually you know, show what makes you specifically unique to you and what why your interests are something that you should continue studying. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think that also I didn't do preparation to come to university. Same as you, I just followed my own interests and 
uh, you know, try to be as authentic to, to what I found important. Uh, so, so that I think if you care about what you're doing and you really want to, you know, put that passion into something, uh, it shows. Okay, and how long is the design bachelor's program? Uh, it depends. It's uh, designed to be three years, so you can complete it in three years. That's what I'm aiming to do, so I should be graduating this coming summer. But um, I think Zena is taking four years to do it or something like this. Um, yeah. But, you know, it depends on how you pace your studies, but it's designed to take three years, the, the bachelor's at least. Uh, did you know Finnish when you started at Auto, or did you learn it well here? Well, I knew Finnish. <laughs> and how well, I, I don't know Finnish yet. I try. I try. Um, but yeah, I, I knew nothing of Finnish before coming. I knew moi uh, kitos, that's it. <laughs> But I've, I've gradually started learning a bit more. Yeah, I also like don't know any Finnish before I come here. So I guess I could uh, build on my perspective a little bit in the sense that I did know Finnish, but because I came from an international background, I'd only really spoken Finnish with my parents. And so like academic wise or speaking with friends or anything like this, that was completely new to me. And I was really like, unconfident with that so if there's any expatriate Finns who are thinking of coming here who are worried about like what their Finnish language level might be um I was first really embarrassed about my Finnish language level as a Finnish person but now I'm starting to get more comfortable with it and I definitely noticed the difference between like three years living here and like actually speaking to people not just my parents and like using it also in a more academic context so it's uh also kind of refreshing to like have to use my mother tongue in like a more diverse situation. Yeah. And uh, what classes do students take in the bachelor's degree? Uh, is it broad? Yeah. I, I, can, I can start answering this. There's, we've talked a bit about some of the classes that we take uh, before. But there's, there's a lot of different topics that we go through. And of course, in three years, um, taking at least three courses every period, it is it is a lot of classes. Um, I can recommend that you go into the Alto um, Into website. I think it's into.alto.p. Um, and there's a description of all the courses that we take in, the, in this program. Um, but yeah, we go through, generally, we go through graphic design courses, uh, basic arts courses, language courses, service design, um, what else, uh, academic writing, uh, many different kinds of projects, like the one I mentioned with the NGO. Um, I did a project uh, for the Ministry of Interior in Finland. Um, in another course, which was systems slash service design, we do some programming, uh, we build 3D printers, <laughs> and yeah, a, a lot of different stuff. Yeah, and uh, there is a very important question, like all the classes are not offline, right? Some of them are, at least for me, like I said, I'm taking four. Uh, two of my classes right now are offline, so they're on campus, and two of them are online. But at least from what I know, they are also in hybrid mode. So there's some classes that might be like half online, half offline. And so I think, I don't want to completely speak for the university on this point, but there are definitely offline classes right now. And so it's not entirely um, like just staring at your screen every day. Yeah. From, from what I heard, um, maybe go to better official sources, but from the third period of this year, 
will be having uh, the facilities at Alto to full use and all the courses that need to be will be physically here. Um, but until then, we're in this hybrid mode. But for example, all, all the classes that I'm taking now, which are just two, um, are here physically in the workshops. So what do the workshops look like? Uh, what can we choose? Uh, you don't have to choose anything. <laughs> like you can use all the workshops. Um, that's like the great thing. The workshops are amazing. They're like fully equipped and and like you've got all these different kinds of things you can do. Um, you always get support from the workshop masters. You go to them with a crazy project and they're like, yeah, yeah, come on, let's do this. Um, so that's, that's kind of the thing going on, but we've got, uh, you can look at also online. Um, there's a very nice uh, 360 images of all the uh, workshops um, and these little tours uh, also that happened and sort of explain what goes on there. But there's like the clay workshop, ceramic, sorry, or wood and metal. Uh, there's, a, there, there's a lot of things. There's biophilia, which is like mixing science and uh, art and like biology. And what else? Help me. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of um, there's there's a lot of machines there. Um, at least like if I use, just use the example of the sewing workshop, when we did our introduction there, um, I was so surprised with how many different machines there are. I was, I don't know, maybe this is just because I don't know anything about sewing, but I was kind of just expecting there to be like sewing machines and maybe an iron and stuff like that. But there's so many different machines that you can use. And like Zena said, the workshop masters are really open to helping you achieve whatever project it is that you want to do. I've never heard of a student who's gone to a workshop master and they've said that, no, that's, that's too much, that's too ambitious because those are workshop masters who like enjoy working in those kinds of workshops. So usually they're just excited to use the equipment that's there. And they're also equally excited to push the boundaries of what you can do with the machinery. And it is like professional level machinery. Like some of those stuff, like you technically can't operate it without training. So if you're worried that there's something that Alto can't provide for you because it's too professional or too industry standard, that's probably not true. There's some, there's some really heavy duty equipment in those workshops. So I'd really recommend like exploring them and seeing what opportunities there are because there's so many that I don't think we can even name all of them here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, one of my favorites, the 3D printing workshop is, is really nice. And there's a lot of very interesting equipment. I was 3D printing with food the other um, semester. Yeah, and I remember there is a course about how to use those uh, workshop. Like they have an introduction course where, uh, which you take the course and then there will be teachers who guide you about how to use those equipment so you won't worry about these. And also like uh, Valley that they have a tick. Um, you can borrow some equipment from there also. Yeah. Uh, approximately, how much does it cost to live in Finland? Like average per month? Well, I can say that I live really cheap, um, but on an average, including rent and everything, I've spent around 500 euros per month. Um, yeah, but for example, I don't eat out or I don't really spend on extra stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I would agree with Zina. <clears throat> I think from the perspective of someone who tends to spend a little bit more than they should um, with rent and all that stuff included, um, probably 600, 700 euros. So something along there. Uh, could you tell us more about the primary assignments? The preliminary assignments? Yeah, preliminary. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, for us, God, I don't even know if I remember the preliminary assignments, but there were 
there were a couple. So we had to do one that was like, we had to build an, um, like an egg holder out of, I think it was four sheets of a, like A4 printer paper. And I think we were allowed to use like scissors and tape, but it had to hold like three eggs and it had to have like a handle on it or something like that. Um, and then we had to do, um, we had to describe at least one example of good design and one example of bad design. And then there was one where we had to do like a future some kind of futuristic device that you could find in a library. And we had to show like a prototype of that and show how it would be used in that library. And then there was one where we had to make a, a small gift that an NGO could use for something, if I don't remember correctly. Yeah, that was, that was it. Yeah. But those were, um, those were the intake assignments. Is that not what a preliminary assignment is? No. Sorry. <laughs> so, so remember we had the preliminary assignments that were the first ones way before, and then we had the intake assignments that came later on that were mostly in video format. Um, and the preliminary assignments were like our story, my story thus far, um, where you had to like uh, show creatively the most important moments of our life and okay. and stuff like that and then i think uh, it was uh we had to look through the news uh both international and national for a week and make a collage out of what we found important and then pick out one of the news articles and uh take it as an, a problem and try to make a design solution to that problem um and yeah, was there anything else? I, I'm sure there was something else, but they were all along those lines. Yeah, there was probably something else, but they all blend together in my head. They were all just assignments that they wanted us to do. They, they change uh, over the years though. So you're not going to have these same assignments, but they are going to be around those same lines, I think. And Honestly, I would recommend have fun with it. Yes. Because yeah, it's, it's, it's also there for you to enjoy and it is stressful. <laughs> I know I stressed a lot, um, but just just try to, to have fun and get crazy with your ideas and yeah. Yeah, I think um, like Zena said, they change, but I think they are always available after the application period has ended like the actual assignments that were given? Um, I think, for example, ours weren't shared. Okay, but at least for some of the years, they sometimes release the thing that like for, not like actually during the intake process, but like after the intake has happened um, and people have been admitted, then they'll say that for this year, this is what Alta wanted for this particular intake. So yeah. if you're worried about how they change, then you can take a look at those examples. Um, but yeah. And uh, what sort of clubs or extracurricular things are there? There's so many. <laughs> There's so many different ones. Um, like uh, we're part of the design student associations or that's obviously for the students of design and we do a lot of uh, activities for that specifically. Um, but there's a ton of different ones. There's Probably if you look them up, someone has made an association for it. There's like one for film and then there's um, one for, there's the Aldo Investment Club. So if you're interested in investing, they do also that. Um, you know, there's Aldo IES, which is the Aldo uh, Entrepreneurship Society. So they work with entrepreneurship, obviously, but there's a ton of different ones. So if you have a very niche interest and there is an association for it, you can always make one and find other people who are also interested in that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I can say that, for example, I'm this year, like I'm part of Alto ES, uh, just because I'm I'm uh, doing some volunteer work for them in an event that's coming up, a design hackathon, and uh, then I'm also part of Otanko, which is a pole dancing association, uh, and there's a 
bunch of other sports related associations. I think I saw a question pop up there. Um, and there's, for example, I think kickboxing and then cricket and frisbee golf, frisbee golf, yes. Uh, and so many other things. Uh, yeah. I think there's one that's only for martial arts and and etc. Yeah. There is also a gym on campus that you also get, um, I think you can get a membership there and it's also um, like student priced. So you get a student price for being part of the gym that's on campus. Um, but they don't only have a gym on campus that that particular student gym is also like has different locations around uh, Espo and Helsinki, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I think for those student organizations that uh, in the orientation week, there will be some check points. Or like, I, I yeah. forgot what exactly they are, but there are some points that they are there and uh, they will introduce you about what they are doing and something like this. Yes, yeah, that's actually a really good point. We had that a couple weeks ago, ago. it's called OTA Orienteering and it's exactly as you described, it's like um, the student associations who want to take part will set up a checkpoint at different parts of campus and it's an event specifically for freshmen to uh, get the chance to go around to these checkpoints and hear about these different clubs and associations and um, get to know all of them in like one place. And so if you really want to get to know the associations, that's one of the events that I'd really recommend that you check out because that's also where you can get patches for your student overalls. Very important. Uh, could you elaborate more on the type of careers we can get out of this program? Uh, well, I mean, from my perspective, like I'm, I want to go into game design. And so that's kind of my perspective. And obviously there's also a ton of stuff that goes into game design. So I could go more into programming. Um, I'm hoping to go a little bit more into pre-production. So I would work a little bit more with um, character design and concept design and stuff like that. But um, really, if there's some, some kind of title that is something design, you can probably do that if you study in the design program. Um, they really don't, I've never heard a student be told, no, this is not a career that you can pursue with this degree. Um, they usually try, your study coordinators and the people who run the program try and um, help you pursue whatever kind of design it is that you want to have as a career. Yeah. And how are the job perspectives for international students? I think I can answer this a bit. Um, so there is uh, quite a lot of uh, jobs for just English speaking people, uh, but it's not as much as, for example, I would like. Um, so I think especially in design, there's been more and more opportunities each year for English speakers, but it still has a long way to go. Um, I can say that in the more like beginner positions, uh, it's a bit harder to find English speaking uh, job opportunities, but once you start becoming more experienced, then it becomes easier. Um, but I know a lot of English speaking uh, designers here who have started uh, with only English as their language um, and they have found their way. Um, so it's not impossible for sure. And yeah. Okay. A question about how was the interview like? The interview was surprisingly chill. Like, yeah. When I heard that I got the interview, I asked some of my friends who were also interviewing for universities what they did to prepare. And they had all these things where they like were practicing questions and they were looking up things and like current events about their industry and da 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 da. And I went into it kind of just expecting to tell them who I was and like what I was interested in and like give them an idea of who I am as a person. And, you know, that's kind of exactly the vibe of the interview that it's really just they want to talk to you and they want to see what kind of person you are. And if you just go in and you are open with them and you're friendly and, you know, you talk about what it is that you like, then I think that's one of the best ways to go because really you want to distinguish yourself as like what makes you, you like the authenticity perspective. Mm -hmm.
And yeah, I was so nervous with the interview. I thought there was going to be suddenly five dudes all sitting in their suits at a table looking at me. Um, but it was completely the opposite. I had two lovely uh, professors who just came and were like super chill and relaxed. And we talked about what interested us and we got to just have a normal conversation. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's like the interview is also like this. So it's that you don't have to really be nervous about it. Uh, are there any uh, exchange programs available? Yes, yes there's lots. There's one uh, specialization, well, not specialization, but like minor you can take, um, which is called Metis. It's the Masters of European Design. And if you really want to do a lot of exchange, that includes um, both in your bachelor's and your master's um, one year of exchange in each. And they're back to back. So you do your uh, third year of uh, your bachelor's as an exchange in one of the other universities. And then your first year of master's in another university. And then you come back to Alto, your home university, to finish your master's. Um, and in between of those, there's also these METIS meetings in between these different universities. Um, and you get to travel there too. And yeah, but then you can also just take exchanges, like a three month exchange or a six month exchange. Yeah, the exchanges vary a lot. So if you do take take exchange, you don't have to be on exchange for an entire year. You can do a shorter exchange for just three months or just six months. But there are a lot of different destinations and you don't have to just settle for like European ones. I know Japan is a really popular choice. Um, someone from our program is right now on exchange in Dublin. And there's some people who applied to like Amsterdam. So there's a ton of different ones and the university really helps you go through the process. So exchange is definitely possible. Yeah, I think on uh, this Intel Auto website, there is some um, places that you can check that what do they offer. And they usually also, they have this introduction sessions that you can join and they will talk to you that uh, what do they have and how do you process those things. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get darkness, depression in your first year? <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it, it wasn't easy. <laughs> it's, um, it definitely helps if you see people. It was a lot harder for me during quarantine because it was dark and I wasn't allowed to see people, but it does make a difference even though it's dark as long as you get to go and see your friends regularly because that's kind of the important thing is that you maintain contact and you remember that there is life outside of the darkness and it, it goes on regardless of how dark it gets during the winter. <laughs> Yeah, and take your take your vitamin D. That's super important. Uh, at least like I went to the pharmacy and they were like, "Oh, you're from a sunny country. Here, take double." Um, so I've been doing that, and I think I went off the vitamin for one month, and it was. You can tell the difference. Um, you you can really notice how your mood changes. Mm -hmm. uh, so take your vitamins. Yeah, and also I've heard of some people who use these um, daylight lamps that like simulate sunlight. I've heard those are very good. And so, you know, darkness, depression or seasonal depression is something that Finland is uh, very conscious of. So like, you don't have to worry that it's just some like urban legend that we like talk about. Like there is definitely ways that people can help you with it. Um, so if that is something you end up struggling with, there's options for you. Uh there is a question about, is there a course that you can learn fashion design? Mm, I think actually the second years have um, a fashion course now. I forget what the name is. I think it's history of fashion. Yeah. Um, but I think it's more theoretical. But uh, there are many courses. It's hard on the bachelor's level because the only studies for fashion um bachelors are in Finnish so you can always try to find some uh, master's courses which um usually the teachers are very friendly and if it's in English you can just go and say hey I want to be here I am very motivated please let me study 
um, and they they usually do. Uh, but you have to take your own initiative. It's there's definitely like just in um, our mandatory courses, there's not much fashion design unless you want to orient it that way. But you won't get as much support, for example, if you try to do fashion design as if you were trying to do anything else. Yeah. So considering the time, this will be the last question and a quick one. Are there any assignments that are related to drawing and painting in the application process? Mm. Well, the current one, I'm not sure about for us. Um, I guess it's kind of like you can choose, like for example, with the intake assignment, the one that we had that was like a timeline of your life. Um, I ended up doing a little bit of drawing for that and a little bit of digital work for that. So if what you really like is drawing and painting, then you can incorporate that into your assignment and that can help show that this is my interest and this is what I want to do. But if you do struggle with drawing or painting and you're scared that that's something that you might have to focus on, you definitely don't have to. If you don't think that that's your strong point or you'd rather focus on something else, then I would really recommend highlighting that instead. Yeah. So considering the time, we have to wrap it up and uh, just contact us if you have more questions. So uh, for example, there's this webinar this Friday that you can ask admission services about the applying uh, problems or any questions related to that. You can also send an email to admissions at auto.fi. And if you have any questions about studying at Auto, there's Auto Squad. Um, it's a, like the student ambassadors are really willingly to help. You can chat with them on uh, Unibuddy or like join the squad for a Friday coffee session. But actually for now it haven't started yet, but it will start soon. And for the latest news, upcoming in ones are and useful links, check out auto I fly slash studies. Okay, so thank you for joining and hope to see you on the campus in the next year. And thank you, Ilona and Zina, for <laughs> talking about your own experience to the people and then help them know more about the Auto University and this art programs. Yeah, thank you for interviewing us and yeah, please come to uh, talk to us on, on everything that was mentioned before. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for letting us share and really don't hesitate to be in contact because we are very happy to share our experience. Yeah. Also, I can really recommend uh, the Friday coffee sessions with squad once they start happening. I love to host those and I love to talk to people and I'm sure Ilona does as well. So yeah, they're, they're very fun.